Hey, how you doing? Alex here. Thanks for joining me. In today's episode, we are talking about what a Division I catcher looks like in high school. You could also reframe it as what a Division I commit looks like. We're going to be talking about those attributes. We're also going to be viewing it as well. I have some video of a, a current Division I commit right now who's a junior. And the reason why I'm doing this is to help you work on the things that you need to work on because what these coaches look for, right? We're going to be talking about really what these college coaches are looking for. And this is not only for Division One. This is Division Two, II, Division Three, JUCO, NAI. All of these things translate over you know, across all of the levels of what these college coaches are looking at. And especially if you're a sophomore or junior or even earlier right now, these are the things that you need to be locking in because between sophomore year and junior year, that is the thick of the college recruiting process of getting on radars of schools, especially as we're going into the spring and summer. It's an exciting time. So let's hop right into it. If you get anything from this episode, please smash that like button if you're on YouTube and subscribe. And if you're just listening to this on the podcast, make sure you subscribe so you can get my episodes each and every week. So with that said, let's go on and dive into what does a Division One catcher look like? All right. So they receive very, very well and can handle velocity and movement. I want you to think about this. Is receiving doesn't get enough credit. It's not sexy, but it can, it's an art, okay? And you have to think of the name of the position is catcher, right? You have to be able to catch the ball, but also be able to catch it really, really well to make the look, make the pitches even look better than they, what they really are to the guy behind you, right? The umpire and pitchers will love you for this. If you can catch the ball really, really well and make that guy, right? Make the pitcher look great and look honestly better than what he is. They are going to love you. The best compliment a catcher can have is a pitcher going, I want to throw to that guy. That is the best compliment a catcher can have. But be able to can handle velocity and movement because that's what you're going to get at the next level. Not only D1, but across all the levels. Got to be able to block well, right? This is the second most thing that you do as a catcher. First one is receiving. You catch a lot of balls. As far as the number of pitches in the game, you're going to be catching those. Block balls, you might have a good day in the sense of it's only a couple balls you have to block or it could be a rough day where you're blocking a lot. You have to be able to block the ball well and you have to be trusted from the pitcher and the, and the coaching staff and the pitching staff. They have to be able to trust you with a guy on third base in the bottom of the seven to throw a breaking ball over one, two, in the dirt, swing and strike, you block it, you're able to throw it to first base. Uh, so confidence and having that mentality that you're a wall and that you're not going to let anything behind you is ha- goes a long way. You don't have to be the most technical blocker. You just have to have the great, great mindset for that. Throws well, absolutely. Got to be able to throw well. Got to have good feet, good transfer, accurate around the bag. Quick actions is what they're going to be looking for and what I used to look for. And this is near and dear to my heart. I'm a, I'm a former catcher. Uh, so this is definitely near and dear to my heart. But good feet, good transfer, um, as well, and good carry to the back and accurate guys. Like you throwing a one nine or one eight or these crazy numbers in these showcases these days, but they're up here or they're over here. That turns into like a two three, two four, two five. I rather a two zero right on the back where the guy just t- catches it and tags. That is that is what we're looking for. That's what the shortstops are looking for. The second basemen are looking for. That's what the college coaches are looking for. Um, then hitting, yeah, hitting for average is pretty much a must, meaning you got to be able to hit some. Now, defense comes first, but when we're talking from a Division One level, you got to be able to hit a little bit, all right? You got to be able to hit a little bit, um, and if you have power, man, that is just a plus of there. So, commands the field. There's a leader. You have some presence on the field. You don't have to be a rah-rah guy, but you just have some presence about you. You're able to control the pitching staff. You're able to walk out there, understand certain personalities get them through what they need to get through you're the coach on the field you got to be able to think ahead you got to know who's on deck you got to know who's coming up uh what they did last time what you threw to them what was the success what uh wasn't okay you got to know what pitchers their first uh, best pitches their second best pitch their third best pitch etc uh coachable is trying to improve coaches obviously love this and cares about winning you got to again be that leader if you're uh, nonchalant about the games and nonchalant uh, that's that's not going to go a long way everybody you're the only only position okay that everybody's looking 
at you okay so you got to have some presence now let's talk a little bit about pop time so i know that uh, ca- uh, a lot of catchers talk about this and, and it is important to a certain extent we have to be able to get rid of the ball and get it down there but it, it's not as crazy numbers as you think and let me talk a little bit about physicality so catchers are physical at the next level you got to be physical because you got to be able to hold up and demand all of the games that you have uh, to catch it's a lot of games it's four to five games a week um and obviously you're not seven innings or nine innings and everything's up right the the, the, the speed of the game is up, the intensity of the game, all the players around you are higher level, so it's more demanding from that side. Now, let's talk about pop times, okay? Leave the showcases pop times because most of, the, most of these showcases, and I, I did it, so I get it, but these pop times are honestly are crazy and what you think you have to have. And, and we really should focus on what your in-game pop time is. Because do you know the average pop time of an MLB catcher in-game is around a 192 to a 195, right around there, okay? That's in-game. So all of these, like, you got to be below 190, 17. No, you don't have to. But on average, having about around a 197 on average is a good place to be because we want the realistic pop times, right? The realistic of what you do in the game. So 197 is an average. So there's going to be guys above that. There's going to be guys around 2-0. That's where I kind of, kind of hovered at at Division One level. I call it at the Division One level. I hovered right around 2-0, okay? And, of course, there's definitely some guys. There's exceptions that are below that, uh, definitely below that. D2 is around that 205. Being a good, Again, I'd rather a guy that's 205 right on the back every single time division three two one ish again just good accurate you don't have to have the strongest arm in the world just got to get rid of it right and then work on your arm as you go but your foot your foot footwork and your transfer can have a lot of help uh, through this process especially if you don't have the strongest arm so let's take a look um at a division one catcher who is committed to a Houston, and uh, he is a guy that uh, kind of embodies what these averages that we were looked at as a catcher. So I want to uh, take a look at this. So first thing, we're going to look at a 60. Uh, the good thing is, as a catcher, you don't have to have the world's best 60. I certainly didn't. Uh, we're very average here is around 7.5 from a 60 standpoint, um, and the high school average is around there. Uh, of course, you want to continue to get better from hitting. He's definitely physical, which is what we look for from a hitting standpoint. He is strong. He has good bat speed, and he's got some pop. So this is a really good, um, as far as what we like to see as a hitter standpoint, he's got some pop there. Again, what you're looking for is simplicity, speed, bat speed, and some power. Now, catching, he's not cheating too much. Super accurate here, right? He's, uh, man, like, again, he's not trying to, he's not setting up crazy, and he is around the bag. Again, the ball flight is good. His feet are good. His his transfer is really good. And honestly, he can clean up some of that. He comes and gets the ball there. But overall, that is what you're looking for f- from a high school catcher that's going to play at the next level. That's that's going to garner interest from these college coaches. Obviously, did with Houston. They went out and offered him, and he's committed there now. And uh, that is what you want uh, from there. So take a look at this and focus on, obviously, your receiving, your blocking, and your throwing. And honestly, in that order, you're, you throw every day. So you'll always work on that. But don't neglect your receiving. Don't neglect your blocking. And, of course, continue to hit, hit, hit. That's a bonus. Hopefully you got something from this episode. If you did, please smash that like button, that thumbs up, and I will see you in the next episode.